This episode is presented to you by NFL Sunday Ticket, now on YouTube and YouTube TV. With NFL Sunday Ticket on YouTube and YouTube TV, you can watch your favorite teams out of market Sunday games, plus watch up to four games at once with multiview. Don't miss the race to the playoffs. NFL Sunday Ticket is now just $39 when bundled with YouTube TV, where you get even more football. Visit youtube.com slash Spotify offer to sign up now. Lowest price on YouTube TV with base plan. Rest of 2023 season. Terms and embargoes apply. No cancellations. Apple Gift Card is a practical gift that unlocks a world of entertainment and fun. You can send it via email or give a physical card to your loved ones. Your friends and family can spend it on their favorite Apple services, including Apple subscriptions. Apple Gift Card can be used to buy all things Apple. Products, accessories, apps, games, movies, TV shows, iCloud Plus, and more. Visit apple.com for details and to send Apple gift cards to your friends and family this holiday season. Tis the season to shine with H&M. Discover the holiday collection and find fashionable pieces for your wardrobe or for under the tree. Get inspired and dazzle with this year's glam. From tuxedo styles, bow detailed pieces, impressive prints, and more. From unforgettable looks to unforgettable gifts. With fashion finds to home decor, find it all at H&M. Treat your loved ones and yourself this season. Shop in-store or at hm.com. The holidays are a time to feel and create joy. And what could be more joyous than the look on her face as she unwraps a stunning new jewelry piece from Blue Nile? How about getting 50% off your purchase? Blue Nile offers premium quality, priced below traditional retail. Their online experts are available 24-7 to answer any questions and make sure you've picked the perfect gift. For a limited time, you can get 50% off at BlueNile.com. That's 50% off at BlueNile.com. it again with another episode of the Shades of Blue Soccer Show. I'm Cody Bradley, Thad Bell, and Robert Russert here, the original trio. David couldn't get away, but we are in person. Robert has notes, so it's gonna be <laughs> it's gonna be a good night. Somebody's gotta be. Prepared. And I didn't change out of my work clothes. I still have those on. So yeah, you look very spiffy. Oh yeah, <laughs> much, much more professional than anybody else here. <laughs> yes, and I just came from a fancy birthday dinner too. And yeah, still... happy birthday! I'm gonna guess thirty three. Wow, very good. All right. You should nice. have guessed younger to make me feel better, but okay. <laughs> hey, that's a I'm hell of a lot younger than I am. <laughs> okay, 29. That's good. I feel, like, I feel like 29. Yeah, 33. I feel good. It was good. But I realized today I, I like... I feel like nine some days. Yeah. <laughs> and, and 109 the next day. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I, uh, I like this whole Monday birthday thing because I, I, I kind of claimed the weekend as well. I got to celebrate all weekend and then got taken out for, by my parents for Monday birthday dinner. Stretched it out. It worked. I like it. I think you get like two more days, man. Yeah, I'm going to claim the whole week. I know that's a little stretch. <laughs> now, are you one of those? You may not be old enough, but you take advantage of every birthday restaurant that will give you something. Oh, I learned a long time ago <laughs> that any restaurants you like, anything like that, that you always give them your birthday. And, mm-hmm. then, and then your email is just filled. The whole birthday month is filled. And I've been, I've been eating very good. <laughs> nice. I still have a cold stone. I got to buy one, get one free cold stone that I need to burn. Well, you could go get one and bring one back for me. <laughs> Maybe not. I think this would be the other way. But <laughs> but you do realize that it's a sign you're old, right? Getting there, man. Okay, I'm right. getting there. I never actually <laughs> considered, like as a little kid, I never thought like I, that I would be 33 years old. Never thought I would make it this long. Here we are. <laughs> okay. Should we talk about this terrible soccer team? Sure. We don't talk negative enough about them, so I came out strongly. Apparently. Reddit, Reddit hates yes. us because we're not negative <laughs> enough. <laughs> Honestly, that's like in high school. It's like if, if people in Reddit don't like you, I'm going to say you're probably doing something right. <laughs> like if you weren't cool in high school, that means you're probably cool now. Oh, I must be good. <laughs> okay, well then you just proved my proved a flaw on my plan there. Yeah, yeah I thought so. Okay, three to, three to nothing, right? Is that how that ended? Three to nothing? Yeah. At the riot versus Real Salt Lake. Two of them after the red card, though, right? Two of them after the red card. Let's just go ahead and start at the red card there because Peter Vermees made it a big point after the after the game there. I don't know. Did someone just not – someone didn't remind him that a yellow card also would have removed, removed Roger from the game. 
because he was making a big deal about the straight red, which I get his point he was making, but if it's it's irrelevant, right? Because he would have had a second yellow and he would have been removed from the game. So, yeah, I think the big controversy is, I mean, straight red is seems like oh, it's such a harsh foul to be a straight red, and yeah. arguably it wasn't. So I, I think that's the calling point there. But also, you got to realize a straight red's reviewable, which is a good thing. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, but uh, I don't know. I watched the replay over and over, just you know, in my anticipation of doing our pod tonight. And it's not even clear that Roger gets the ball to my eyes. Uh, no, I think he gets the ball. Why the ball? What the made the ball, ball change? doesn't get affected by his foot if it does then, or very slightly. Oh, well, I'm going to go with you because you claim to have just watched it so many times. But I <laughs> yes. swear, I, I swear that, I, that it was like very clear that the ball changed directions. Like he got it with the side of his foot and that it changed directions. There's but. one viewpoint that shows. Maybe he got the ball. The other one that shows, uh, I don't think he got the ball. Hmm. So you're really the only person that's questioned whether or not the ball was even. Yeah, I mean, I there's, well, there's that was one. the first thing I looked at. Okay, does there's the ball's motion change? And I don't know. Maybe I don't have good eyes. You know, I am old. Huh. But uh, I, I mean, I've, I've heard people say, you know, it was obviously a straight red or it was maybe a straight red or all that stuff. But you're the first person to even question whether the ball was. Hot takes. I mean, it's not <laughs> it's not required to get the ball or not get the ball in order right. to be a red. Right. Or um, a second yellow. Right. But going back to Ramiz, everybody, uh, again, another thing it seems like people are thinking that Ramiz was talking about being straight red. He actually brought up the fact that it, was, it would have been a yellow and that mm. would have been it anyway. So, And then I guess I'll, I'll ask adding to his frustration as well would be that the first yellow card that he got, if he wasn't Roger Espinoza with 70 however many freaking cards that he has, I think another player gets the benefit of the doubt there. Are you uh, a Jacob Peterson disciple? Is that why you're saying this? Oh, oh friend of the pod. <laughs> yes. FOP Jacob Peterson. Uh, I mean, I don't know. That was arguably a... I mean, took him out. He he was going toward goal. He took him outside. You know, it wasn't shoulder to shoulder, really. It was more like my body sledding the side of yours. Uh, I don't know. I had no problem with that yellow. I just want to say a friend of the pod, Jacob Peterson, also... Backing me up on my Fontas take. He referred to him as one of the greatest passers out of the back in the world. In the world. Ooh. I think he said that. Maybe he just said it my last. Um, I, somebody did say that Jake said that. I may not have heard that myself. So I yeah, I that I'm just I'm just saying I'm not uh, I'm not all alone and digging my toes in the sand for Andrea Fontas. <laughs> Andreo is a good passer. There's no doubt about that. But so so tell me what what happened here. We I I rang true the until they don't. It rang true again unfortunately. But it, it is that a bad is that a bad take that I gave there like of course a team doesn't look good until they like of course they look fine and when they're not giving up a goal and then they give up a goal they don't look good. Of course <laughs> that happens. But is that do, it seems to be a thing with this team, right? Well, how many saves did Polska make that first half? What record of five? That is true. In the first few minutes, five or six, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but, but then I guess is the difference there that those were, those were shots. They were, um, you know, an individual moment. Something happened, and a guy got a shot off, and he made a good save. It was through traffic, et cetera. But these moments that I'm referring to are the it's just defensive breakdowns where it's just a simple cross. All of a sudden, a cross comes in, and a guy's ten feet open, nobody around him, and he heads the ball in. Well, I think it's the dramaticness, dramatic nature of the goals we give up that you're mostly referring to. So I definitely agree. But a point three expected goals is that a team that's playing well? Dramatic? Are they even dramatic? It all just <laughs> seems so. Well, they look dramatic because of how bad they are. So they routine. Look like, yeah, they look so routine, incredibly undramatic, just from the training that's, ground. Yeah. They're playing JV that night. Well, that's I mean, what makes them dramatic. <laughs> it, I mean, I've watched how many teams just practice that same pass, that yeah. same header, uh, with no defenders on them, which is pretty much how. <laughs> it's like a it's like a scrimmage, a seventy five percent scrimmage is like what all these goals look like. When uh, so maybe like your reaction scrimmage. is dramatic. It's the dramatic part of it. That, like, that what is the? true. <laughs> that is very true. Yeah, there was a lot of uh, four letter words after that first goal last night. <laughs> and then the fact that they scored so quick after the the red was like oh insult to injury right and there and into the second half. All right, so so a little defense of them is they didn't let it go into a seven goal game. <laughs> All right, there we go. Found something. What a guy! What a guy, Thad. Low bar. We're lowering the bar quite a ways in order to give some credit there, but 
Are you that, like are you that forgiving with your wife? Is she here? <laughs> <laughs> So tomorrow <laughs> we can we can talk a little bit about the, about the back line. One positive we could maybe talk about is Caden Pierre, who Thad and I will be talking to on Tuesday. Nice. Uh, yeah, Caden Pierre has now started it's, uh, three games in a row, three four games in a row, and has moments where like man, wildly impressive, just jaunting up the field with ease and yeah, he lo- he looks very good in in many moments. Jaunting? Yeah, that didn't feel right. <laughs> that didn't feel right coming out. Gallivanting. Gallivanting. That, that. It was definitely a gallivant. <laughs> With a jaunty style. What is jaunting? Did I get that way wrong or was it just kind of wrong? It was jaunting kind of has some style, some moxie yeah. to it, some, you know, yeah. There you go. Okay. Well, that would be jaunty. I mean, jaunting is a, like, you're doing it. <laughs> you, like, go for All right. you can Whatever. Can one go for you a You went jaunt? on a jaunt, yes. <laughs> Okay, I, I'm claiming it. I got it right. I'm sticking by it. We're, we're gonna. I'm gonna do a little research. <laughs> anyway, anyway, how good is Caden Pierre? That guy. <laughs> no, I, he's been one of the bright spots. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, he's young. He's got potential. He's got speed. I love how he can get back in on defense. How he can make those slide tackles. Uh, he's got some passing ability. He needs to improve that still some, I think, but. Yeah, there's still yeah, you can just see like the raw abilities there. He can he can create space, he can keep the ball at his feet and all that, but then there's just maybe like a decision making moment that he, the, the pass doesn't come soon enough or, you know, one maybe one thing at the end of a play sometimes, but that yeah, might be there. familiarity, you know, with who he's playing with and how they're familiar with him too, but um he even has like you alluded to some good skill in tight spaces as well, so. Yeah, yeah, fancy footwork. Yeah. Yeah. And I know one of the one of the points of fact last night was that it was almost a entirely young back line except for Izzy. Mm-hmm. You had, you know, Logan and Dembe and Robert Volader and Caden Pierre and then Volader. also Pulse Camp. Volader. We Volader. interviewed him and you still don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> so can we talk about Izzy? I saw him taking a lot of heat. Well can we finish Caden Pierre? Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I mean, didn't Justin Miram have him for lunch a lot? I mean how yeah, many times at, did at he least, beat him? Yeah, a couple times at yeah, least. Yeah. That's all Justin. Oh, it's also Justin Miram. So yeah, he yeah, had a good match. He's for done sure. that to many a left back. And <laughs> Definitely. Good yeah, lesson right for A ton, Kaden, ton of experience that he uh, can't always put a lot of time together, but when he does, man, he's really good, Justin. Yeah. Jake was gushing over him. Jake's a big Justin Miram fan. I discovered this match. He would have He would have been somebody I would have loved to have had on uh, sporting at one point. But yeah. Yeah, he would have been a good fit probably too. You don't think he would have been another Justin Mapp for sporting because that's just our luck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, d- d- well that way we would now. Have, how good was Miriam for Atlanta United? Not so good. Yeah. Yeah, but that's the coaching. Yeah. They didn't have any good coaches there. All right. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Thad trying to get the ire of the Mexican national team. Okay, so Izzy took some heat. We gave him some heat in the last podcast as well. Um, these, this trend of wide open headers, set pieces seems to often be near him, around him. Uh, where, where are you guys at with him? Or uh, there were some people that are just done. I saw Jimmy, Jimmy on our site was just kind of done with all of our, all of the center backs. It looked like he was like, we should just get rid of everyone. Uh, are you guys done with Issy? I don't know about done, but it's getting a lot closer. He's not been impressive this year. It's it's moments. Keep going, Thad. Keep going. I'm just curious why why you say that. Just because I'm a little down on everybody at the moment. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, there are there are times like I have seen him choose a good moment to step up and like take a gamble and intercept a pass and make a good tackle. Yes. But my yeah, my God, what is it on these on set pieces or the or the yeah. ball is in if, the air? If you could remove that one piece of the game. <laughs> He would be more than acceptable. That one vital part of defending to, for a center back, which yeah. only happens, you know, <laughs> three times a game, <laughs> yeah, or twenty-seven when you're in this run of form. Yeah, I mean that one. I I am not a center back, so it's like genuinely I don't I genuinely don't even know the f- I don't have like a feel for where what they you know you see the play it comes in and he's faded away and I know that's what the attacker's point is doing is to fade away from a, the center back, but. Man, that ball comes in and it's just Izzy. Like, where, where you were never. The, he jumped at that and was just never going to get it. 
Which goal are you talking about? Um, it, I guess it was the third one, right? Was that a, yeah, I think it was the third one. Yeah, okay. Because the first and the third were similar. And it just, it, the guy that headed it in was right in perfect spot to head it, and a second before the ball was kicked, Izzy was right next to him. And then the ball comes in, and Izzy's just desperately leaping to get a tip of his head on it, and isn't isn't there. I, I, I don't get it. You guys are all looking at me. Okay. Well, yeah. you were. I anti. disagree you were, with you were everything. I disagree just about everything you guys are Admittedly, saying. Admittedly, you were very antsy there. Okay. <laughs> so what? What? What do we disagree on? The here? goal we were just talking about. Okay. Again, I, I went through and watched each goal just for these discussions. And um, what about Pulse Camp on that goal? I mean, the goal is scored yeah. three to four yards out, and Pulse Camp doesn't even move toward the cross. Now, granted, the cross came in at a little strong pace. But Polskip doesn't do anything. He even called himself out he after did. the game. That's what I was just he yeah. said. Maybe he should have. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But Volodare doesn't do anything. He's Volodare. got two guys. Ar- yeah, sorry. He's got two Robbie. guys around Robbie. him that are rotating around him, and he stands in the same space, doesn't move toward either yeah. of them. Okay, that ball goes over Izzy's head. Izzy, okay. He, I, I don't know if he jumped this time or not, but Izzy's smart enough to know I can reach that ball if I jump. I can't reach that ball if I do jump. Either way, he's smart enough to know that. I don't blame Izzy on that goal. I don't blame Izzy on the Minnesota goal. I don't blame Izzy on the first goal. There are other people that I blame more so. Okay. Yeah. So that's just my two. And, and you know Different that Izzy got MLS Team of the Week after the Minnesota performance, right? Would yeah, because those played, are always accurate. Didn't he play 90, <laughs> yeah, but there are a number of stats that back up his performance. Like I said in our last pod, I think we look too much at the negative things that might be partial his fault, but we don't look a lot of the other good things too. No, he does a lot of do good things. His, yeah. yeah. Honestly, if on a different day you talk to me, I would have probably been a little bit different mood, but <laughs> it's today. Yeah. Right? I get you. Um, so I do think that if you look at a lot of, I think it was what six of the last eight goals given up was a similar goal. Like, mm-hmm. So, right. you know, yeah. a cross in and a semi free header. And, and that was pulse camp. That was Melia. That was different goalies. Yeah. I think Izzy was probably there for. He was in the vicinity. That's that was my point. That's all yeah. I. That's all I gave him. <laughs> and that's all I gave him was in, it seems in to a be game like him. last night. He's the senior guy. Oh yeah, for sure. So he's got to he be the on, one. Did you hear? Him? He put on the captain's badge at one point. Right after Roger left, yeah. Yeah. I. I yes. Why well, didn't go to Russell? I called it a I badge, armband, because he was already out. He was out already. Okay, Both yeah. of them yeah. had been taken out That's of the game. Right. That's so. true. Yep. So is he's third on that pecking order? <laughs> in that group last night. Yeah, that's true. If Millie had been in, it might have gone to him. Ah, yeah. yeah. There's older people, so. Okay. Bontus. <laughs> <laughs> All, All right. right, so we agree to disagree. I don't know. I was trying to decide if we should keep picking on the center backs that are not here. Of we, you mentioned Volader. Of all of these guys on this trend of they look fine until they don't, his his mistakes seem to hit the hardest this year. Like his have been the most glaring, it seems. So I do I, and I think Issy in that situation would be aware he is on a back line with three very very young people and is probably has his his mind racing, you know, pretty quickly. Yeah, and I mean, again, Pulse Camp can also call out people to do things. It's mm-hmm. it's a judgment call. It's really fast moving, and, and honestly, in certain situations, center back is like one of the best spots because you see the entire field. But when it goes the opposite way, you're the guy who can't see anything that's going on because mm-hmm. everything's rushing towards your own goal. So it's really hard to make those decisions on crosses and and exactly where to be at times like that. So I I, I get it. I mean, that was my best spot with center back or usually right back, honestly, but. Um, Because I had no jump, so (laughs) I couldn't be in the middle too much. At one point, wasn't Issy a target for set pieces? And didn't I like? Didn't he get a head on a ball or two? Why? When was the last time that happened? When was the last time we (laughs) won a header on a corner kick? Like, it's just insane. I, I'm a math, you know, scientifically thinking guy. At some point, we got to score on just a header. We got to run into one header at at some point. (laughs) And head the ball straight into the net off a corner kick. I'd have to go back and look at the stats on it because there's been 
a couple years where we were very critical of the set pieces, and yeah. then all of a sudden they pull out a stat like we were that Sporting was one of the best ones in the league. But it was second. Right. Yeah. We looked, like, that we wasn't too many that. seasons ago. We looked at that. It was like second. We scored on a lot of second efforts. Yeah. And those they were counting those, but it still in, since twenty since Aurelian Cullen in the MLS Cup twenty thirteen headed that ball in. In to send the ball into extra time, send the game into extra time. I can't, off the top of my head, I can remember one, just the ball comes in and a big person headed the ball in, and that was Matt Beesler throwing it in off of a, in New York City. In big the person, field. I'm glad you said that. You're missing all those Kevin Ellis headers, man. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I disqualified all those. Little guy. He did yeah. have some yeah. good headers. Latif <laughs> Blessing, Latif Blessing, the Open Cup final. Come on. Yeah. Okay, but wasn't that... <laughs> But you're that also just forgetting Ike Opara. Of a that was a right from Azuzi Cross. It was yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay, you're forgetting Ike. He, well, no, he I, got quite a few of them. Ike, Ike had the. It was one of the, my favorite ones. Was in the skinny field in New York. Matt Beesler just threw it in from the skinny field, and it was <laughs> as strong and powerful. Yeah, and as why it. don't we have that weapon anymore? <laughs> What's up with that? Yeah, no one can do that anymore. <laughs> Actually, you notice like not a lot of not a lot of teams seem to do that as much yeah. as they try to. For it was a thing for a while. It's all about now. It's now it's fancy play with your feet passing. And Cody, where did the high school flip throw go? When you played high school, that was a thing, right? Where'd yeah, that go? I, but even when I <laughs> even when I was little, it was like if someone did it, it was like an eye roll because it's like, are you actually getting anything more from? They that? did it a lot in girls soccer because girls can do that stuff. Yeah, girls soccer that was popular. Yeah. I remember yeah. that. They're better at flips. <laughs> Exactly. This episode is brought to you by Google Pixel, the official fan phone of the NBA and WNBA. The new Pixel 8 and Pixel 8 Pro are built different. How? Take the audio magic eraser tool that helps block out distracting crowd noise so your play-by-play commentary sounds crystal clear. The only phone engineered by Google brings out the audio you care about so your videos sound as crisp as they look. Learn more at googlestore.com forward slash pixel NBA. Audio magic eraser requires Google Photos app. May not work on all audio elements. Okay. Um, okay, yeah, I beat the center backs into the ground here, right? I think so. Did Uri gain any points for you guys this week? He didn't have any bad oh. moments, so he didn't stick out in my head for that. So that's got to be a point for him. Because I've been thinking quite negatively of him. I've got three bad points written down, but okay. Well, let's hear them. <laughs> no, we don't need to go into detail. I don't want to pick. <laughs> no, we're, we're not negative enough. Be negative. Oh, that's right. That's right. Okay, come 24th out, minute. Come out Uri swinging. is slow to react. Um, that's, that's the one that ends with the Roger yellow. If Uri had stepped in mm-hmm. earlier, we lost possession, and Uri doesn't switch uh, to his left like he could have to close down the passing gap. That leads to Roger's yellow. Um, he lets a man go in the 37th minute, and I've got WTF in my notes. What the fuck? Uh, in the 41st. Um, we, we do know what that means. <laughs> Thank you. Uri turns the ball over, and then he uh, he can't stop the counter once he loses the ball. That's really his job to do in the midfield as a destroyer. And he he's is lost too, possession. He he's too do slow to ever stop oh, those yes. counters. No doubt. No doubt. Oh, my gosh. And it's like the the foul, you know, the crafty midfielder that breaks up the play, like, they they reach a point in their career and those fouls are just one split second too late and they all start turning into yellows and it wait, just wait, wait, are you talking work. about Roger? Or is I know <laughs> right. that is exactly what I was thinking about on that play, like on the red card one. It's it's just like you know the the game is a split second like faster against his body than it used to be in that tackle. He used to get there and it didn't quite look like that. Yeah, that's what I. I did think about yeah. maybe because it was my birthday and I'm getting older too, and that's what I, <laughs> that's what I was thinking about. Just that touch faster, it would have been a clear yellow, <laughs> right. and he still would have been off. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. So, in in the in the week though, there was a win, a draw, and a loss. Any other time going on the road for three straight games and that kind of those teams that schedule, you would have looked at that and went, yeah, that's not bad. Too positive, sad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, that's uh, you're grasping well, at straws. Yeah. Well, see, that's this is <laughs> this is my secret is I almost always like flip to whatever the opposite of whatever anybody else is doing. So if your guys are happy, I'm going to be negative. <laughs> if you're negative, I'll be happy. Or actually, you could argue what he's saying is negative. That like the team is so bad that we should be happy with this amount of points. But <laughs> if you were watching these games, you could come away disappointed. Like just that lad, the one to one draw, like just the way that went down, you know, you could have felt like three points should have come from there. And then the way this one happened. So Sporting scored twice and had a draw. 
Yeah. <laughs> it's not, we didn't put up wooden spoon numbers the last week. Yeah, but you still got to look at the standings and see that we played more games than everybody else. I know. <laughs> when is that? When does that get fixed? Maybe Open Cup week when we're playing Open Cup semi and everybody else plays a midweek game. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Because some were too ahead anyway. Which That's the next challenge for Peter is how do you manage this team next week? Play LAFC, then Sacramento, then I forget who's after that. But, again, three games in a week. Yeah, we mentioned it very briefly in that last podcast, but if you are going to be resting someone in these games, you they, they go full bore for in Sacramento, right? You almost have to. It's, you know, what's more important to Peter, a very slim chance of making the playoffs. And I would say very slim, a slim chance of making the playoffs. I don't, don't need to extra quantify that yeah. one. Uh, or a chance to go to an Open Cup final and, Chance to play in a cup final, man. In this season, that would be awesome. Yeah. So you say we rest uh, Russell and Shalloway this weekend, maybe when we play a limited amount of time or what? Even all these games where we quote-unquote rest Russell, he ends up playing every time. <laughs> he ends up getting in for the last 20 minutes because they have a chance to win. It's just to keep his legs fresh. Yeah. <laughs> how about how about Marinos Janis getting the start up top? Wasn't quite as good as last time, was it? No, it wasn't. He went like 65 minutes before getting yanked. Some of that's to RSL's credit, too, though. Yes. A lot of it is to RSL's credit. I mean, and I don't know. Did we miss Duke and Hernandez in the midfield from the get go? Yes. Yeah. yeah I, I mean, so I think they did. I think they did. And see, this is an argument that I will make is that I, you know, people will make the. Uh, Criticism of Shelton for not scoring enough goals, for the back line for not doing enough stuff. My criticism is the midfield in general. Oh, yeah. Not just, Agreed. Not just Yuri. Uh, Duke, Hernandez, Roger, Remy. I don't know anybody else played there, but... David Greenwald would agree with you. Um, that's the biggest area, is actually that. The, the forward line improves if the midfield improves. The back line improves if the midfield improves. And it's not just one guy. I mean, one guy might be able to make it much better, but it's... It's it's everybody's like, and I'm not even criticizing any one player, because I'm happy with pretty much all of them playing in there at some point, somewhere, somehow, even if it's in a backup role, Yuri. But it's just that it's not been good enough. If they're better at getting the ball for, if they're better at possessing, if they're better at defending in that spot, whatever it is, everybody else is better. I think that back line last night would have been fine if the midfield would have controlled the ball better because it would have limited that down to one chance. You know, what stat I was looking for was turnovers. How many turnovers did we have last night? Seemed like a lot. You can't ask that question and then not have the answer. Hey, I looked. I couldn't find the stat. I went to three different websites. Foot mob. (laughs) Does it have that? Turnovers, I think. I don't know. Somebody stretch and stall for me while I look it up. (laughs) Um but that's one of the interesting to things, though. Clarify: Duke was on the right wing, starting uh, in Minnesota. He wasn't in the midfield, but mm. yeah. And like I said, I, I, this is not criticizing anyone of them. I'm more than happy for any of them to be in there. But there has to be some person that's better than what they're doing now. Maybe that's Eric Tommy when he comes in. Who knows? Maybe that would have been Jose Maury if he'd have stuck around. That obviously could have been Kinda if he wasn't injured for the year. What do you call a turnover? Is that even? That's just a judgment call on if we if, if it's just a mispass or like someone though that's a turnover. Or you get that's not on even a, a stat that even. Yeah, that's not even a soccer stat, is it? Oh yeah, no, it's on their site as far as total turnovers for the season. But I was looking for this game, couldn't find it. So. But yeah, now that is a good question. Like, what are they? Is there just a guy each game that like in baseball that guy gets to decide? What well, was a lot a of these are I mean, key passes. I mean, is. Well, not key passes, but um, what's the other term? Progressive right. passes or whatever is a I mean, like call. You call it a turnover if like someone misses a pass in the box, but if a defender launches it all the way down the field, that's just like a missed pass, right? Right, exactly. Yeah. But see, then well, I don't that's know, a when, then where's the line then? That would be a clearance. No, it's uh, the center of Fontas playing a, a long ball for someone gunning it down the wing. I thought you just Apparent said Apparent intention. Game. So, yeah, yeah. I don't like this. There was they had six interceptions though, if that means anything. 
Yeah, I did see that, that uh, RSL had more, for sure. Well, that's probably a version of that same stat. So. Sporting won more ground duels, though, and more overall duels. How'd they win more ground duels? Uh, well, what the hell is a duel? I don't know. <laughs> it's when you're competing for something. All right, before we get bogged down in this, so <laughs> what do you think about the LAFC matchup? I mean, do we go in and, and you know... Or do we really focus on Wednesday night and keep our guys fresh? What's, no, this, what's the plan? this feels like one of those games that any time in this history where we think sporting is not going to do well, then they end up doing well. This is the the opposite of a trap game. Well, sporting. we can't and lose. Sporting is going to win. We can't lose at home like three, four, nothing, right? That, that's not going to go over well. And L, this, <laughs> this is at home. LA is, is yeah. coming here, right? Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we're going to win this game. Yeah. Probably right. one of the biggest disappointments is that Roger won't be there in order to take out Bale. <laughs> He Bale did of, not look so wonderful uh, in his debut. Well, his but his, you saw like it was literally like his very first touch was like that fancy that was flick. Nice. <laughs> that was nice. Yeah, I, I was like, of course. But the game so he was in he had did. no rhythm either, and it was yeah. was wasn't pretty. So, yeah, we're gonna we're, we'll beat LAFC two to one. Oh, okay. Yeah, Johnny's with the brace. I said that last game, and he didn't do anything. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Just double down. It's my new thing on the show, guys. I double down. Should we mention the possibility of the new guys? A guest this week, maybe? All right, I don't know. You're the one that's been working <laughs> on it. Do you want to promise this or not? <laughs> yeah. I, I wouldn't say it unless it's like... Uh, We're hey. working on a guest. Hey, he wants to. An old friend. Yeah. An old friend that wants to join. Yes. <laughs> Relevant to the game coming up. Exactly. So we'll see. We can keep it short here. So, well, you just l- you looking at everyone like you've got something here. What do you got? For I was us? waiting to see if you guys are going to say anything. No, but you have something, and I'm very eager to hear what it is. You know, Cody's going to come to you and say say something prophetic. No, you can't warn him. <laughs> you don't know. I don't do that every time. You don't no. know me. No, you don't. I do have a little sideline. I helped my daughter move this weekend. Talking about calf ratings, her fiance, my future uh, son-in-law, this calves man. They've got these veins going through them that are like thick. Mm, see, I think that I think that's a negative on the <laughs> calves. I think that's a is negative it? point. Yeah, is it, man? You st- yeah, it's got some big calves for a kid. Calves on, I mean, veins on an arm on a bicep that looks good. Not, not on the calves, but not, not on calves. calves. Okay, it's right. a knock. Good to know your criteria. Mm-hmm. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Not sure how you come up with that judgment. It's just the way the world is. It's not my rules. It's it's kind of is. Aesthetic. <laughs> you <laughs> could look it up. Um. <laughs> that felt so right when they. Came. It's not my <laughs> rules. It definitely is my rules. <laughs> Uh, oh, did okay. you want to get to something, or should we keep? Are, are we done with sporting? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, sure. You got we got current stuff. Yeah, I was just gonna bring up the current are on a seven game unbeaten streak. On a roll, baby. Hell yes. <laughs> Even though they they don't like us to say they're on an unbeaten streak. Why? I don't know. <laughs> I wish I, <laughs> the team was like, don't call it that. No, it's not the team. It's not like PR. It's like if you say, oh. Coach, you're on a five-game unbeaten streak. Oh, I didn't know that, Thad. Oh, Coach, you're on a six-game unbeaten oh, streak. Well, I didn't know that, it. Thad. And he, I mean, it just keeps on going like that, right? And then it even sounds superstitious. Even Lola Bonta last night, as, and I wasn't even actually really talking about an unbeaten streak. It was more just like the run of form, right? It wasn't that you won every game. It's just trying to. It was a, a shortcut to saying on a right. good run of form. But she goes, "Oh, that's such a media question talking about the unbeaten streak." <laughs> Ooh, you may low <laughs> mad. And I'm like. Oh, come on. But they're on a seven-game unbeaten streak. They are. You saw her celebration. I watched this game. I watched that game. Impressive. Yeah, I, I did, too. I was, I was there. Uh, I did not go. But I watched it, and I, and I liked her celebration. Like, the bull. It was, she was like a bull and ran through the red corner flag. I think she said she did that for J.C. Johnson's niece. I'm not sure what that aspect I was. was say, is J.C. Johnson's niece a bullfighter? <laughs> <laughs> of course she is. I Does she live it? in Spain? No. Well, I don't know where her niece lives, but her J.C. Johnson comes from Lee Summit. Okay. She played for Lee Summit West. Okay. Hey, that's we're in that neighborhood, aren't we? It's like right over there. <laughs> same, <laughs> s- same, same school my daughter. Ah, the for. Titans. Cody, you're a North grad, right? Yeah, I was a Bronco. Okay. Well, they have a player from there, too. It's very Kansas City, Kansas City to ask, like, what high school did you go to? I thought that was a very St. Louis thing. Anyway. See, I, that's why I said it, because I knew you guys, like, St. Louis tried to claim that once. We, I think we've talked about this before. 
We, yeah. It really wasn't that big of a deal when I was there, or I was just so far out in the boonies, nobody cared. But it was a thing in St. Louis. I don't know if it still is because there's things change. Like they now call it the Lou. I'm like, that how was many stupid? That would we'd have been pissed if people called it that when I was there. How many uh, was in your daughter's graduating class from West in twenty five hundred and twenty thirty? Oh, so there then West isn't still like D three or whatever in sports and stuff, are they? No, I think they're in the top division. Oh, see, yeah. when I was top in high school, conference. they were like cheating and playing in the lower division and winning right. everything in the right. world. Right, exactly. Yep. So they're up to D5. Okay, that's good. I don't know. So do they play? Does North, do North and West play each other? That sounds fun. Yeah. Oh, cool. Okay. All right. I think uh, that's I your high school football report. <laughs> <laughs> I think one of them high dropped school out. football is the only one that matters. The lower one. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Um, okay, do you want, should we, uh, we didn't really talk about the current, I uh, didn't give you much time there to talk women's soccer. Well, it's... And I'm making you miss what USA versus Canada right now, too. Yeah, you nervous? Uh, I know it was like a thing, people were nervous that they were going to lose to Canada. They very well could, because they just have not been as, uh... What do you think of Vlatka? Strong offensive. Are we, are you, are you, is his leash getting shorter for you? It's getting tighter, but I mean, I think it's far from being yanked, but... They... He's been there for a while, and yeah, they. Not that I follow as closely as others, but that they don't seem to have been as dominant or have had these glorious performances in his yeah, reign that I can recall. But that's again, that's kind of a, a a lot of unfair criticism because the previous team that won the World Cup was just filled with veterans, yeah. and well, a lot of them just think were it was a barely hanging thing. on. Yeah. Well, okay. Also, is I mean, is it? The rest of the world getting better? Is that well, they are. They yeah. clearly are. And and Canadian women have been always, I don't want to say always, but over the last couple of decades, they've been always uh, subservient to the U.S., but not that far away. I mean, they, right. they would always lose, but they've, they've not been that far away. Christine Sinclair. With the, the men's side being... Analysis. <laughs> Bob's just showing off, with, just saying names over yeah, here. Yeah, random <laughs> names. He, he, his contribution. There was, there was a Canadian good. woman I knew once. No. Sydney LaRue. <laughs> There you go, that's um, Canadian. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> she played for the U.S., man. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know, that was my joke. Thank she had you. to convert. Um, but I think Canada's just in that, they're in a really good spot right now. U.S. is in the having to transition to a lot of younger players. If you look at a lot of the lineups, you know, there's been Sophie Smith, um, Smith Ashley Hatch, Ashley Sanchez, Trinity Rodman, um, they're, they're missing Katarina Macario because of injury. So they're Trinity missing. Rodman has had like plenty of time she's with the ton, national she's team. She's not had a ton of time, but she's, she's on that getting up there stage. So she's uh, been coming off the bench. I th- so yeah, I've seen some highlights of her. Looks pretty, looks like kind of a badass. but they have, uh, they have a lot of younger players. They still have a few older players. Um, so they're just in that transition where Canada's just a little bit ahead of them right now. And that, aspect of it and one of the things about Vlaco I, I love him as a coach I think he's a tremendous coach but his teams tend to not be as high scoring even when you have a mm. great amount of talent so I would that's one of the concerns like oh they're not scoring eight goals on these teams all the time yeah um one I one comment from the current game and now I can't think of her name the striker I saw miss two golden opportunities, so they're suffering from the same issues. Which striker? CC? Um, it's like Germanish last name. Kaiser? Kaiser. She missed a – who's the winger? There's like a blonde girl winger. Kristen Hamilton. Hamilton. She's, she's, she's dope. I like her. Yeah. No, uh, she – if you noticed, she was running all game. Like, I mean, side to side, back and forth. I mean, she was all over the place. Uh she was pressing. She's she's a beast. I love her. Yeah, she's she's very good. She curled in a perfect ball, and it just went right on the foot of that Kaiser, and she skied it. She did. I was right there. But uh, she's the one uh, they actually traded for Kaiser because she's also a Kansas City native. They got mm-hmm. her from Louisville because they needed another potential scoring punch. They uh, – when they lost Lynn Williams at the beginning of the season, that was their big scorer. They lost Sam Mewis. That's another big scorer. Mm-hmm. So I forgot about Sam Mewis. Yeah, she should be coming back soon. 
Was that a, a knee injury? Because yeah. all women get ACL injuries. Uh, yeah. No. Literally no. all of them. What is going on? Is it, why don't we figure this out? It's the structure of the female yes. knee. I know. I feel well, weird. Like three men talking about that on here, but like we know. No, it's it, no. It, well, I do know. It's not. It's not a sexist thing. It's yeah. The it's the angle from the pelvis through the knee is different, and it occur, it starts to occur as girls get more womanly. They all of a sudden start becoming a super much higher percentage for it. Hmm. Um, so it just has a different st- stress on the knee. So women are like thirty five percent more likely to get an ACL or MCL, whichever one that is. Wow. And there's certain exercises that you can do to <laughs> struggling today. <laughs> there's certain exercises women can do to help strengthen that and prevent it, but it still is a extremely high. Um, but Sam was not an ACL, or at least not that they've ever said. Well, to bring this full circle, you talked about a uh, girl missing an opportunity. What about John East's opportunity? He oh yes, yeah, he flubbed. Did. Yeah, would have been a big, one. big moment for him if he'd put that away. But yeah. he's going to score two on Saturday, yeah, so, so we're good. <laughs> Double down, baby. <laughs> but, no, I, but going back to CC for a, CC Kaiser for a second, yeah. I think this is her fifth game with the team, and she's got oh, two okay. goals and assist. Oh, okay. There you go. Uh, like last, the previous game, she scored that exact same one that she just missed on that one. Yeah, I was judging. I was judging heavily on like three plays that I watched happen. And the see first the, one, she kind of missed it and then laughed, and I was like, "What are you laughing at?" <laughs> and then she missed one really bad, and I was like, "I hate." It. <laughs> All I need to see, she is the worst. The the one she's competing for a lot of time with is um, Elise Bennett, who is another beast. But she in college, I think she had like one of the lowest scoring percentages in college for a uh, forward. So it was like ten percent. But she created a lot of opportunities because she was just faster, stronger, better, and so many other ways. So if you saw towards the end of the game, she came in and replaced Kaiser. And I think Elise had two or three good opportunities yeah. running in on goal and didn't score any. Yeah. So they're, they're, that's why they they still need one more. And Tobin Heath made an appearance. That was cool. I didn't even know she was like still playing. Other <laughs> team. But I was like, Tobin, yeah, that's someone I know. Uh, now let's go to uh, Robert with the weather forecast. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's supposed to be a high of 103 on Saturday. Yikes. Of course, the match isn't until 730. But, you know, yeah. It's just heat, man. <laughs> Every 15 minutes, water breaks, right? Right, yeah, that'll be fun. Okay, any final thoughts? Covered a lot of ground tonight, I think. Play the youth, right? Play the youth, because we have no other option. <laughs> this morning! has just been sent off Some part of strong and all comes off My fun fun has got me drinking My fun fun has got me drinking My fun fun has got me drinking Give me a whiskey, when a gin Anything to shake this foot I'm in My fun fun has got me drinking Yeah.